There are a lot of bass VST plugins out there to choose from, but which ones are the best? In today's video, I'm gonna give you my top five best bass plugins ever. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. We're gonna be doing this in reverse order today, starting off at number five and building up to my absolute favorite at number one. Now don't forget to follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music through the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. Now let's get started with my number five pick. A lot of you may be surprised that I've got this Rickenbacker contact library in my top five at all. It's a pretty quirky sounding instrument and if you've ever loaded it up you may not have been that impressed. Well let me explain to you in a moment why I think you may have misjudged it but first of all let's have a listen. So the Rickenbacker is a pretty distinct kind of sound and it's very easy to kind of pigeonhole it and think it's only suitable for one or two different styles of music. Added to that, when you do first load this plugin up in its default setting, it sounds like this. Now you may like that sound for certain types of music, yeah, it sounds pretty harsh, could be great for some rock songs, but you may look, think, look, it's not that suitable for other types of music. But let me show you just how versatile this bass guitar is in terms of sound. So I'm gonna start off first of all by clicking on the guitar itself, and then I'm gonna make some adjustments to both the neck and the bridge pickups. I'll just drag this tone control down, just like you would on the real bass guitar, yeah? and I'm looking to make it a little bit more mellow sounding. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, it's getting there. It's still got a little bit of edge, but I think that's okay. Now, the real magic with this plugin or this library happens when you start to adjust and bring in the amplification and some of the other effects, just like would happen in real life. It's when you amplify a guitar or a bass guitar where the magic happens. You can do that over here by clicking on this amp head here. Now, when you first switch this on, it's actually gonna sound pretty terrible, just like in real life, you really need to plug it into the cabinet, okay? So I'm gonna switch on that amp, just like I have here. But I'm gonna go straight to the cabinet, and I'm just gonna switch that on. We've got a choice of cabinets here. We'll look at that in a moment. But let's just see how it's sounding now. Okay, it's sounding much rounder, yeah. I think it can be even deeper and rounder than this. I've already experimented and I rather like this cabinet over here, yeah. You can see there's a number to choose from. Have a listen now. Okay, that's getting pretty nice. And then if we go over here, we can also add in some tape saturation. Yeah, I'll just push the warmth up here a little bit. We'll have a listen to that. And you can hear now that it's a very different sounding instrument, the kind of bass guitar that you could use on all kinds of genres of music. And that is why it's in this top five. <laughs> Ample Sound have a really great range of bass guitars in their collection, including some classics and also a really nice upright bass as well. But it's this bass guitar, the Ample Bass J, which I use more often than not from their collection. It's based on, if you excuse, use the pun, a Fender Jazz Bass. Now, strangely, although this is at number four in my top five, I actually use this plugin more than any of the others. We'll talk about why I would do that in a moment. But first of all, let's just have a quick listen. So I think the Fender Jazz Bass sound is the most versatile of all of them. And, you know, it just can be used in all kinds of genres of music. So that's partly why I go for this plugin quite often. It loads up real quickly and I know what I'm getting. 
Also, I often use it as a stand-in until I record a real bass guitar. And my real bass guitar is a Fender Jazz Bass. So that's why I quite often use this plugin. And although some of the other plugins we're going to see do have a Fender Jazz Bass sound, I just particularly like the sound of this one. Now, with all Ample Sound products, you get great control over the instrument. So it's done with key switches. You can see some of the key switches in blue down here so you can change articulations you know hammer-ons and slides all that kind of good stuff um, and also some sort of sound effects and things as well um, but what I really like about these plugins more than anything is I can adjust the sound real quick with their amplification so you know there's several different amps that you can choose from yeah which just are all distinct in their own way um, there's some other effects we have in here you know EQ compression reverb delay all of that kind of good stuff as well and you can also go in there and do things like, you know, um, swap out microphones on the cabinets and things like that as well. So overall, a very, very versatile instrument. And it's just going to give you that Fender Jazz Bass sound that so many of us want. You know, up until a few days ago, this contact library, Session Bass's Prime Bass, was going to be my number three pick. However, since then, I downloaded and installed this, and I love it. This is Session basis icon base let's have a listen Now the power of this line of instruments is in the patterns, okay, and the sort of compositional side of this. And that's what you were hearing there, just one of the patterns. However, you can still play this in a regular way just by playing, you know, regular notes on your keyboard. Now you can do all of this, all of the things I'm about to demonstrate, that is, with key switches, but I'm going to do it with my mouse for now, just so you can see what I'm doing. So we can just play regular notes here. And we can change the sound of those with articulations that we can see over here. So that was an open sound. And then we've got a muted sound. Yeah, we've got harmonics. And this slap and pop sound. Yeah, so you've got some changes that you can make in terms of articulations. And then you've got these patterns over here. Yeah, so I'll just play one of these patterns. That was the one we were listening to a moment ago. Another one. And these are just a few of many, many, many patterns that you've got. These ones are the dusty slap patterns, but we can change something completely different. So let's have a try with this one. Of course, all linked to the sort of tempo in your door. And you can also, as I say, play individual notes. So you can do your own variations as well. Have a listen to this one. And loads and loads and loads and loads and loads more. Now, as well as being able to play those patterns and play the individual notes, you can change the sound of the bass guitar itself in many, many ways. For example, we've got bass settings here, which is a little bit similar to what we did earlier. We can just change the overall tone of the bass before it goes through amplification. And then we also have an effects rack here, including some um, amplifiers and cabinets as well. And then uh, in terms of the actual playing um, we have some control over the kind of how human that playing is yeah with things like humanized swing um etc etc so this is a fantastic tool i mean it sounds great as a bass guitar but it's also a fantastic tool in terms of getting something together really really quickly by using these onboard patterns one thing i like about some of these basses is the way that it makes life so much easier for you in just the same way as DistroKid, our sponsor makes it easy for you to tell people about your music releases. This is the hyperfollow page for one of my EPs, Wonderland. When people visit this web page, they can choose for themselves which one of these great platforms they want to listen to my music on. But I didn't have to create this page. It was generated automatically for me when I uploaded my EP 
to DistroKid. If we visit my DistroKid page here and look at this EP and scroll down, you can see the section just at the bottom here where they supply the link for me to share. Now I can share that on places like Facebook where they will automatically be generated my album artwork and people can just click on this and go straight to that hyperlink page. Now this is all included with the base price of DistroKid which is just $19.99 per year. If you follow the link in the description, you'll get 7% off of that already great price. This is Easy Bass from Tune Track, and there's a very specific reason why it's in here at number two. But before we get into that, let's just have a quick listen. Now with the basic version of this, you get a couple of basses there. I was using the Easy Modern Bass, but you can also switch to the Easy Vintage Bass. So I preferred for this particular song, the Modern Bass, and I should mention, you can actually buy additional libraries um, that you can drag into this, but you, it basically comes with these two bases. You can also go to some different presets for these. This is on the Clean DI one at the moment, but as you can see, there's lots and lots of presets that you can choose from to get a different sound. This is Firm Distortion. Let's have a listen to that. So you get the idea there. But I don't think that the sort of real strength of this plugin is going in and tweaking the sound. You can't do too much of that. It's basically based on the presets. The really cool thing about this particular plugin is the way that you can compose with it. So if we go to the groove section here, you can see there's loads and loads and loads of different categories and play styles of groove. So you can go through, so I want a disco groove, I could click on that and go to some standard ones and I can find them in here and audition them like so. And then once I'm happy with a groove that I want, I can grab it and I can just drag it into my song and I can start to create a composition in that way. Now, one of the features that I found really good with this in terms of actually being able to find the groove that I want is this uh, tap to find feature. So with this, um, I'll click on it in a moment, but you click on it and then you basically tap out the sort of rhythm that you want from your bass. Yeah, so I'll do that now. That was a kind of a rubbish rhythm, but it doesn't matter. Then I can just click on find similar grooves. I'll click on that and it's going to find some which have a similar kind of a rhythm pattern to that. So I found that particularly useful. Now, once you've dragged your groove in onto your sort of composition area down here, then you can change several aspects of it. Primarily, one of the things you can do is go ahead and actually change the chord that the groove is based on. So here I've got an A minor, A minor, D to E progression, but I could change that uh, from an a minor to uh, let's say a C here yeah and it's then gonna uh, change that let's have a listen Yes, yeah, so you can hear the chord changing there. So that's very, very handy. And it makes it super quick to put together a bass line. But you don't need to think of this as a very rigid thing where you're kind of stuck with the patterns that you've got. There's also this grid editor where you can actually go in and make fine adjustments to those patterns and create your own little sections and things, of course. Incredibly versatile. As well as this, you can do things like um, import MIDI or audio and have the plugin create a baseline based upon what it can detect in those things that you import. So my main point about this plugin is yes, it's got a nice sound to it and yes, you can get some additional libraries and you've got a whole bunch of presets, but its strength is not really about going in and tweaking the sound. Its strength is in its compositional abilities. And you know, once you've actually created this composition down here, you can actually drag this out into your door and drop it there and you could actually use these patterns with other plugins as well so 
I think this is fantastic, particularly as a compositional tool. Now, before we move on to my number one pick, I just wanted to make some honorable mentions for some plugins that could have been on this list, but didn't quite make it for whatever reason. The first one is Trillion Bass. This is an absolute classic bass plugin. I used to have it installed on my system. It's not anymore. And part of the reason for that is it's quite big. So there's a lot of basses in there, which is one of its plus points. But I just find that it's starting to age a little bit now in terms of its workflow and you know the way that you can adapt the bases and things like that but it is definitely worth looking at i'll check out some other videos about that if you're considering it um, the next two are uh, bass fingers and also bass slapper from waves now these probably wouldn't quite have made it into my top five anyway they may have been at six or something like that however i am hesitant to recommend any wave plugins at the moment i'd like to see a better track record from waves first um, with in terms of the way that they treat their customer base before i recommend their plugins that's one of the reasons why they're not in there now let's look at my number one pick <laughs> not only do i think motto base 2 is incredibly deserving of the number one spot here but i happen to notice just before i started making this video that it's being sold an incredible price at the moment for this full version yeah before we get into that let's have a quick listen Now, if you found that you were not all that happy with the sound of the bass there, that's fine because I have to say that this is easily the most versatile of all of the bass instruments that we've got here in terms of being able to change the sound. Now, particularly with the full version that we're looking at here, that's partly possible because of the range of bass guitars available. You can see them all here, all of the classic ones you'd expect, plus some upright basses in there as well. The list is just incredible. So you can sort of get your sound going just by choosing a particular model of of a bass but beyond that where it's really at with here is with the actual customization you can do to the sound for example i can change the playing position by dragging uh, this little thing around here okay so if i put it all the way up here it's going to be quite mellow and if i put it down here it's going to be a little bit more sort of um, high end and it's got a lot more attack to it down there it's subtle but have a quick listen Now a far more drastic change comes about when I start to move the pickups around. Yeah, I'll just push this bridge pickup all the way up here, have a listen. And then you can change things like the playing style, for example. So we were using fingers there, there's pick and there's slap as well, have a listen to those. So there's all kinds of things about the playing style you can change. You can even go in and change things about the strings, yeah, the type of strings that are used. Also, whether this is a fretted bass or whether it's a fretless bass, we can change that here as well. The number of strings, whether you're using a drop tuning, um, the age of the strings, the gauge of the strings, all kinds of things about the strings there that you can change, which all change the sound. And then we looked at this a little bit earlier, the electronics, we can certainly move the pickups around. We can also swap them out out for different pickups completely as well which drastically changes the sound um, then we can sort of mix those pickups together we can also go into the studio mode where we've got a couple of different choices of amps in there as well as well as some stomp pedals that we can use in there as well and on top of all of that with the different sounds of the bass we've also got some patterns to choose from a lot of patterns to choose from in different genres you can find the ones you like and then you can just drag these out into your door yeah, and you can play those patterns there. So this is why that this particular um, plugin is my number one pick. Okay, now it's being sold currently. I just happen to notice over at uh, Sweetwater for ninety nine dollars for this full version. Yeah, that's where you get all of these sort of bass guitars and things 
in there. Now, normally this would cost $299, so, you know, $300, and it's kind of just under $100 now over there at Sweetwater. So definitely check out the link in the description down below, and I wouldn't miss out on that. It's only for this month, I think, so a bargain indeed. Now, all of the drums that you heard accompanying today's basses were created with Addictive Drums too. one of the best drum plugins, in my opinion, and you can find out why right here.